the house. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. And maybe I should help you um, in another way. It's not just who is excited to be in church. Let me say, who is excited to be alive today? All right, all right. That's much better. Come on, go on, go on and just celebrate the giver of life. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so good to have you guys here today. It's um, a wonderful privilege to bring the word of God to you. And um, I know that some of you just made it through the week and, you know, you told yourself that if I can just make it to church on Sunday, um, maybe I will be lifted. Um, trust me, there is lifting in the house of God. There is lifting in the presence of God. And, you know, the Bible said, where two or more are gathered in his name for his purpose is in their midst. So Jesus is here. Can I get an amen for that? Yeah, Jesus is here and it's going to be a wonderful time. Um, spent together today. Um, shout out to the first timer in the house. Ignite, come on, get passionate about the first timer. We love first timers at Ignite. It's interesting to have you here. God bless you. Um, don't forget, just like you have been told, we have a special gift at the blue corner there. Uh, we want to celebrate you. And if you're a first timer out there uh, watching us online, we, we have a display on the screen. Um, just send a text message to that number. Um, test guest to that number, and we will connect with you and do life with you. Just bring out your phone and just send a text message to that number. We'll reach out with you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so welcome to um, day, no, let me not say day two. Let me say week two of our ongoing series, Saved on Purpose. It's important for us to know that we are not just saved because Jesus was you know, excited about doing some saving. Um, yeah, Jesus is excited about saving, but he saved us on purpose. And that's why this teaching is very important to, to every one of us. It started last week. Um, the topic last week was the Jesus employee. Um, is a part of the series that we're having. We're having something more about the kingdom stewardship in this season. Um, because one of the things that you see happen when crises begin to set in, when challenges begin to set in, people begin to go cold for the Lord. But that's actually the time the Lord wants your fire to show. Um, your response, that's the time that your response to crises and challenges becomes different from that of unbelievers. Um, now, you need to also remember that unbelievers are looking at believers now and wondering how they're responding to the crisis. There are some unbelievers who don't go to church, who don't care about Jesus and don't say anything about Jesus, but they're just looking at the Jesus followers. How are they responding? What are they doing? And so this is a time for us to um, pay attention and get a little bit of passion for the things of the kingdom. So like I said, it's saved on purpose. That's the topic of the, the theme of the series. Um, last week we had Jesus employee. How many of you think Emmanuel did fantastic last week? Oh, come on. He did better than you are, you are showing now. I was here. I took notes. He did awesome. And, and, I, and I know that the beautiful thing about his ministration last week is that his life is a testimony to what it takes to serve God. He's a faithful servant of the Most High. He's passionate. He loves the idea of engaging in the church community. And I don't know if you have the same passion, uh, but I pray that at the end of today's teaching, you will live here inspired in a new way. Um, so I think he did a fantastic job. I'm just going to take the baton from him and take it off for this week as we look at the high yield steward. High yield steward. If you're going to take notes, I want you to put that down in your note. High yield steward. Um, put it down in your note. Uh, and, 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 you know, feel free. This is, you're you at Ignite. So uh, nobody's going to tap on you and say, hey, why are you with your phone? Especially when you know that you are using your phone to take notes. Um, the only person who sees you is Jesus. So make sure you are taking notes, not on Instagram. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Can I get an amen for that? Uh, yeah. So let's, let's do that. So go ahead and um, write the title of today's teaching as High Yield Stewardship. High Yield Stewardship. You know, one of the things that I, want, I always love to communicate to believers when I have the opportunity to is to enlighten you on the most important thing about your salvation. You see, you are saved by grace. That's fine. You didn't have to work for it. 
you were a sinner and Jesus loved you anyway and brought salvation on a plate of gold to you. But one thing you have to understand as a believer is that you're saved by grace, but you will be rewarded by works. You will be rewarded by what you do in the kingdom. You, so, so a lot of people make mistakes. They say, because I am a Christian, I should be successful by default. No. Where did you get that script from? Who preached that sermon to you? No. You are saved by grace. Grace is the only thing that you have nothing to do with. Grace is the only thing that you do not have input. But everything that you become in life, every success story of your life, is connected to how God rewards your works, how God rewards the things that you do. So I want us to remember as we go into this teaching, in Jesus' name, amen. If you are ready, now I want to hear a loud, I am ready. All right, so just put your hand in your chest and just say, Father, Lord, I'm ready. Tell it to Jesus. Come on, go ahead and do that. Say, Lord, I'm ready. I want to be taught. I want to be inspired. I want your word to make a difference in my life. Just go ahead and just pray to the Lord. Say, Father, take away every distraction from my mind. I don't want my mind wandering all over the place. I don't want to be thinking of something outside this place. I just want to connect with your word. Father, help me to connect. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, say better amen. 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 Now let me give you a little bit of idea about what I call the Jesus big idea. See, the reason why Jesus is passionate, um, the reason why Jesus went on the cross for you, the reason why Jesus left his majestic heaven. I don't even think that if I have the privilege of being in heaven like Jesus and, and, and God says, do you want to go to the earth and die for people? I'm sure I'm going to say, no God, thanks. No, but no thanks. Uh, I'm not going to go down to, because this place is just comfortable. I wonder how heaven looks. Uh, and, but Jesus left every comfort, every joy, every every morning. This is Jesus probably wakes up every day and all the angels are just flipping their wings and just shouting hallelujah, glory to his name. This is the Jesus that probably moves around in heaven and everybody is trembling and bowing and, you know, and now he's going to go to the world where human that he created, he co-created. Because the Bible said at the beginning, let us make man. So Jesus was part of the team that made you. So he's now going to meet the people he created and he will submit himself to be flogged by them. What a sad thing to do. I can't even imagine it. I can't even imagine it. You know, we had this funny video clip um, that I, I got through my dad and I forwarded it to my family WhatsApp. And there was, in, I think in the, it's in the Middle East, maybe in Saudi Arabia, they created this big robot, a mighty <laughs> big robot. And I was just scared that, can you just imagine if this thing goes evil and decide to kill the people that created them? And I love a very nice comment that my son made. My son said, um, a mouse would be wiser not to create a mouse trap. I don't know if I, I, I probably didn't say it as well as he did. And I thought that was brilliant. You know, just imagine God, um, Jesus, dying and saving people that some of them will still end up rejecting him. Some of them will even kill people that follow him. What other God can you get? So I, I run you through God's, Jesus' big idea. Number one, the big idea of Jesus is for you to become a bridge to the unsaved. Jesus is doing to you what he wants to do through you. So Jesus wants you to be a bridge. He wants to reach more people through you. Another big idea is that Jesus wants you to reflect his attributes. Attributes. How many of, if I ask you today, what is the ultimate attribute? Um, some of you need to listen to my, my podcast, Gospel in Five Minutes. I have a five minutes clip on ultimate attribute of God. You know, if I ask you what's the attribute of God, one of the first things that you always say is love. God is love. Of course, God is love. Love defines God. But do you know the ultimate attribute of God that sometimes we forget? God is holy. So, you know, unbelievers feel comfortable when we say God is love. You no know, matter what I do, God does not condemn me. God is not going to kill me even when I sin. He still loves me. You know, we get bubbling all over the place with that mentality that this is God's attribute that makes it, you know, it's so cool. God loves me. It doesn't matter if I do this, if I do that. Even if I don't go to church, he still loves me. Nobody talks about the attribute of God that is holy. God wants his only attribute to reflect through your life. That you reflect his excellency and that you partner in his earthly project. That's the most important thing that I want us to talk about today. God saved you. Jesus saved you 
so that you will be part of his project on earth. Jesus got his God job to do. Jesus has a vision. He wants you to be part of that vision. He wants you to be part of the church. He wants you to be part of his project on earth. So the, 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 it is not by accident that we termed the, the series as saved on purpose. Every one of you here, you want to live here today knowing that you were saved on purpose. But for, but for what purpose was I saved? That's the big question here. I want us to turn to the book of Ephesians. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians 2 verse 10 quickly. Somebody should go with me to that scripture, Ephesians 2 verse 10. The word of the Lord that for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. So God was strategic. He had an agenda. He said, you know what, if I can bring them to a saving grace, if I can blend and, and, and amend their relationship with the Father and get them committed in the project of getting more people into the kingdom, that would be the best thing to do. So you are on purpose. You know, one of the things that I like to do, apart from being an entrepreneur and, you know, working or serving some organization, I also love um, the stock market. I love to, you know, just, you know, use some little change that I could be spending in McDonald's and, and Chick-fil-A. Sometimes I like to use to buy some stocks. Um, and I watch them every day, watch the way they grow. And I realize that there are some that are very profitable, so but sometimes costly. And sometimes I, I like to eliminate the ones that are not yielding high returns. And I want to focus my finances on those that are yielding high returns. You know, Jesus died for everybody, but it's everyone yielding the maximum return for him. Ask yourself that question. Are you yielding the maximum return for Jesus? That's why the topic today is I yield steward. Are you the high yield steward? Are you the one that is yielding much for the Father? If, you, if, if, if Jesus is to treat you like me, like I treat my share, um, stocks, if Jesus is to treat you like that, would, will you be among the ones that Jesus will focus on because of their yield, or will you be among the ones Jesus will just keep to just be there? Ask yourself that question. You know, there are two things, there are two reasons why Jesus saved you, why he invested his life on you. One is to fix your relationship with the Father. Because without Jesus, we have no relationship with the Father. You know, like I said, God is holy. He won't even behold iniquity. God can't even stand the sinner. So when God looks at you, he doesn't see the girl that, that was at the wrong place yesterday or the guy that just lied this morning on his way to church. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus. And that's why he's comfortable to call you his own. So number one thing that God, um, Jesus came to do was to fix your relationship with the Father. The number two thing is to enlist you in his project. Is to enlist you in the kingdom. That is why there's nothing you hold yourself in your life. As a matter of fact, the greatest response of, with your life to salvation is service. In the kingdom builder, we say you are saved to serve. Emmanuel dealt with this so much last week. I'm not going to go too far. I'd like us to turn to the book of Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. I'm going to read that. Um, this is um, a, a parable or a story of the three servants um, that Jesus gave some, some talents, some gifts to, um, expecting a return in their life. I'm going to read it quick. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servant and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, all right, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their ability. I want you to come and say abilities. All right, so we're going somewhere. He then left on his trip. Then the servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money. Say hi, yield steward. All right. Began to invest the money. They, 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 he went to work. Now, Jesus has saved and deposited gifts in the life of three people. And one of them said, oh, Jesus can entrust me with this gift, with life, with, with abilities. I got to do something with it. He went and they started working. The one with two also did likewise. All right. And going forward, he said, after a long time, their, masters, their master returned from his trip 
and called them to give an account of how they used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Good kid. Good guy. You know, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. May you be found faithful in Jesus' name. Say big amen. amen. You have been faithful in handling this small amount that I gave you. I was just testing you. That's what Jesus is probably saying there. So now we give you more, many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant who had received two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I've earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now the master didn't say, oh no, you didn't do well. I gave one five and he made five. Why did you make two? Why did you not make one? No, 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 no. That's not the focus in the story. He praised him just like he praised the other one. I'm going somewhere. All right. The master, I knew you were, uh, and, the, and the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, a vessel crop you didn't plant, and garden crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid, come on, say the timid Christians, say it. Come on, say timid Christians. All right, that's number, the, 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 third, the third servant now is one of those. That's why I hid it in the head. In other words, I decided that all that matters was as long as I'm saved, let me just be going quietly with you. Um, there's not, no need for me to try to do anything extraordinary. I just want to go to heaven. Here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I invested crops I didn't plant and gathered the crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest. You know, when I, the first time I read that thing, I said, oh, the, it's like Jesus is saying that the least place your money should be is in the bank. Maybe it's not so profitable. He said, at least, you know, just put it in the bank. So good luck to all the savings account holders. Don't, because of me, stop saving. No. Amen. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with 10 bags of silver. Come on, say, what you don't use, you lose. Let me hear you say it loud. All right. He said, say, and they will have an abundance, but from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away from them. Now, throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, unproductive servant. May we not be found in that light in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If you notice how they bubbled and they came to the Lord, I'm going, to, I'm going to bring out some points from that scripture quickly as we quickly take the teaching towards the end. Number one is that we are commissioned for the master's agenda and schedules. You know, we are, we are his investment. We are, we, it's, we are saved for a purpose. That from that story, you, you, the master is traveling and he entrusted them. He, he committed them to his agenda. Your biggest agenda on earth, I don't care where you work, I don't care what you do, everything that you do in your life, is to bring glory back to the master. And the number two in that scriptures, our gift and talents are borrowed. Remember that the father is going to have, you see, your life, your gift, your knowledge, everything you have is borrowed. Because everything belongs to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. He bought you with a price. You see, 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body, with your life, with your everything. The number three thing we must learn from that scripture is the fact that master, the master is a wise investor. In other words, the master invests with understanding. Now the master does not belittle his own creation. He doesn't, the master does not feel that the one given with the one talent is worthless. No. If you notice, what was important to the master was to reward effort. The most important thing to God is to reward your effort. Remember, he rewarded the one with the five talent equally like he rewarded the one with the two talents. So it wasn't about who is better. Jesus was not after the competition. Jesus deploys you so that you will use your effort within your ability. Remember, the scripture said he gave them according to their ability. 
How many of you know some followers of Jesus that don't have as much abilities as you do? This is not the time to look at your neighbors. But some are sitting right by you. Some that have better abilities than you are sitting right by you. But Jesus is not inviting you into the competition of who is more valuable in church. The master is looking for somebody who will identify the ability. You see, the guy with the two did not say, why in the world would Jesus give five to another person and give me just two? I'm hungry. I'm not even going to do anything with the two. He said, well, well this is what, this, 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 Jesus knows that our, our ability is the level of risk we can take, the level of tolerance, the level of passion that we have. Some of us are so scared to talk about Jesus outside because we are thinking we will lose some friends. Some people don't care. Some people will evangelize, will win souls for Jesus at any cost. Jesus knows your ability, but it is okay. All he is looking for is for you to deploy your ability for the benefit of the kingdom. Use your effort in the right way. You don't have to be like D.Y., in media, not only do you have to be like Shino in ushering. But every time you come to church, you know that there is a little you can do and you do it well and faithfully. You don't have to be the best in worship. But you know that if you hold the mic, you will do the best that God has given you. You were trading to the level of your ability. Jesus is honored by it. Because he understands. He gave you the abilities in the first place. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. Another thing we must learn from that scripture is that he appreciates our winning attitude. Remember the winning attitude. You see, the, 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 everything you do and everything you accomplish for God is a function of your attitude to him. You see, the ones with the five talents and the ones with the, with the two they were very passionate. The, the Bible said when, Jesus, when the master came, they were enthusiastic. They, they could hardly wait to bring a report to him. Oh, yeah, Father, you gave me five. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? You're not going to believe it. Jesus had said, what? What? I made that extra five. Oh, attitude. I, I am ready to win. That's the attitude that they have. How many of you have that attitude in kingdom as a Christian, as a believer, to become a high yield steward? That you wake up every day and you tell yourself that before I go back to bed today, Jesus must be glorified in my life. I'm going to be a blessing to somebody. I'm going to serve someone. How many of us? Jesus rewards good attitude. He was excited. He said, you are a good and faithful servant. And he rebuked self-destructive and self-limiting attitudes. You know what self-destructive and self-limiting attitudes are? Attitudes of complaints and excuse. Like I said, the guy with the one talent could have just said, no, I'm done. Or with the guy with the two talents, I mean, he would have just said, you know what, I'm done. How could you give somebody else? We're, we're all created. Yeah, guys. Can I bust your bubble? Can I just let you know this today? This is the first time you are hearing it. You were created equally through God, but you are not created in equal functioning. Everybody is not the same. Everybody might not teach like I do. Everybody might not do certain things. I, I mean, I can't even pick up the microphone and sing like favor. But I'm not going to be angry at Jesus for not giving me favor's voice. I will do the one he has given me while favor is focusing on our own. That's how to be. Come, a high yield steward. Say, praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. You see, the third, the third, the third um, servant had a very wrong view of God. You see, the view of God that you have will affect the choice that you will make for him. When I was growing up and I was getting, stepping into the Christian faith, I know a lot of believers that had the wrong view of God. You know, the only way they see God, just like that servant, the only way some believers see God is they see him as a judge, as the one who is, who is waiting for the next second to condemn you if you do anything. They see him as a God who, I mean, I, I, I literally, for a, for a while, before I, when I was coming into faith, I know a lot of believers that will actually tell me that making money is evil. 
They had the wrong view of God. God doesn't want you to make money. God just wants you to be born again and go to heaven. And when you begin to have that kind of view, that kind of paradigm about God, your decisions and the choices you make will be affected. So the third servant had a wrong view. He sees him like a hard master, somebody who does not want you to relate with the unbelievers. No, don't go near unbelievers. They will make you miss heaven. How are you going to evangelize to them if you don't go close to them? You know, so he had the wrong view of God, and that's why he achieves less for God. What view of God do you have? You know, if you have a view of God as a loving father, you will tend to flow with his love. If you have a view of God as a, as a God who is holy, you will stay away from iniquity. The view of God that you have will affect how you work with God. So the only thing that made that third servant to fail in that story is a wrong view of God. Some of you have been born again for almost 10 years. You do not even have the right view of God, that God has an agenda, that God has a project that is looking for that believer that will jump up. I get excited when I see young kids, like those kids that, that mounted the, the, the cameras. Some of their mates are at home playing games. <laughs> but they are in church, in the kingdom work, holding cameras and making things work for God. That is the attitude of a winner. Come on, say praise the Lord. What has God entrusted in your life? I want to show you something um, lastly. You see, your faith does not guarantee success. Your faith is a leverage for you to achieve success. A lot of believers make mistakes here. They just think, once well, you are born again, you are successful. Hey, how many of you know very poor believers? They love Jesus. How many of you? How many of you know believers that can't even pay their bills? Oh, yeah. It's not a guarantee. You are the one that will affect how you turn out from the leverage of, let me show you an example of a lever on the screen. Let me show you an example of a lever. This, your faith is like this. You see what that man is holding? It's a lever. The only way that man can lift that obstacle, your faith gives you a leverage to be able to lift obstacles in life. Now, every, the, the same rain will fall on everybody. But you will be able to receive it differently because you have faith. The same COVID-19 will affect everybody. Have you heard on the news that this COVID-19 is affecting everybody except the Christians? How many of you have heard that news? No, it doesn't exist. It's affecting everybody. But as a believer, you have leverage. You have something in you, the faith, the love, the passion, the conviction of God to enable you to lift every obstacles in your life, leverage, like the forklift. You see, when you mount on that forklift, there is no amount of weight that you cannot lift. When you stand on that forklift, by the way, I used that my first eight months in the U.S. I was riding that. With that, with that forklift, you can lift everything. I don't need to stretch my mind. Sometimes when I use that forklift to arrange some stock, and I look at it, I say, my God, if I'd used my hand to carry this, I would have been dead. That's how your faith is. You need to treat faith like a leverage. The day I became born again, I told myself that there are so many things that unbelievers will not do that I would do. Because the Bible said I can do all things. To Christ who strengthens me, through my leverage, I can do all things. So stop deceiving yourself and thinking that because you're a Christian, that's, that's, that's an express to success. Faith is a leverage to success, not a limiting factor. But the third servant had a wrong perspective, and he killed him. What are the things that the Lord has entrusted in your life? You're sitting down here wondering, okay, the Lord gave something to three people, um, but what has he given to me? Yes, he has given you life. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Lord has given you life. He has given you resources, time, treasure, talent. Some of you have some talent that you have not even discovered. Guess why? Because you think that church is just about internet and TV. 
I tell people, you can get sermon from home, but you can't grow your faith from home. I know we are at the point in our life where we need to make a decision. So when you say, when, when, the, gov- when the government says it's dangerous, people are dying, and you keep looking at the statistics, and the only time you respond to that statistic is when it comes to the one hour, 30 minutes that you spend in church. But you go eight hours every day, Monday to Friday, to work. You go to Walmart, you go to Kroger, you go to Happy Market. But only on Sunday, one or 30 minutes, that's the time that if you don't stay at home, COVID will catch you. Come on, where's your heart? I tell you what, I work in corporates, I go to offices, most offices or almost every office have not done as much as the church has done when it comes to, to your safety. Not only are you covered by the blood, not only is the church continuously praying for its members, not only do we have all the chairs separated so far apart, some of you can't even high-five your neighbors, not only do we mandate that you put on your mask, not only are you sanitized at the entrance, not only is your temperature checked, come on. The right attitude has given you protection. My question to you is in what ways are you a high yield return on investment? In what ways are you a high yield return on investment? Ask yourself that question as we get close to the end of this message. As we go, I just want us to ponder on certain things very quick. Just take down your notes if you're writing. Number one, we are caught to accountability. You see, the, 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 the accountability that Jesus expects of us is that he has done so much for us, we must do his projects. And when you are accountable, it's not, it doesn't end in church. I always tell people, uh, uh, I'm, if, if, you listen, if you listen to gospel in five minutes, there is a, there is a particular episode that I have that is called um, workplace minister. You are a workplace minister. A lot of you will even, let me tell you, there's so much you can do on Sunday. The play of your ministration is your workplace and your neighborhood. Sunday, within one hour, 30 minutes, we equip you and charge you to go out and be effective for Jesus. So we are called for accountability. Someday, we are going to give account. Irrespective of our gift, another thing you should remember, I want you to take this away very seriously of everything else that you have heard today. Irrespective of your gift, the most important thing that God is looking for is your faithfulness. Be faithful. Be faithful. God is not trying to compare your abilities with that of brother B. No. The master conveniently gave one five talents, gave another one two talents, gave one one. No hard feelings. But all he was expecting was not for the one to eat two or to eat five. It was for the one to do his best with the one. And guess what? If I was that one, I would have blown the master's mind, I'm sure. I'd probably do five and say, master, da-da. You gave me one, you think I'm not so good. Now see, and father, the master will say, oh my, I'm so sorry. I underrated you. But some of us are even living in a life and God is beginning to wonder whether he overrated us. We're functioning below capacity. Stop making Christianity a joke. It's easy and convenient for everybody to make this a joke. I just love Jesus. I am just Jesus. And when you say, come and do something for Jesus, you begin to see the crowd reduce. There is an accountability. Irrespective of your gift, the most important thing is faithfulness. God is just looking for an effort. Success or wealth is a product of your work. I said that I cannot say it enough. Faith alone is not enough. It's how you leverage it. You must avoid excuses in your life. How many of you have a bucket list of excuses why you are not doing good? I do. You know, there was a time in my life, if you come to me and ask me why are things not right, I will just bring out my list and begin to tell you. The government is the Republican. The, my neighbors are wicked. 
my aunt is disturbing me in the village. Um, and they don't appreciate me enough in church. I will begin to down, download. Jesus is telling you to tear that list. Because the only problem is you. And oftentimes we, as the problem of our life, we do not appear on our list of reasons why we're not doing well for the Lord. Remember the regainer. I want you to remember the regainer in that, in that message. When I, re- when I read that story over and over and over and over and over and over again, I kept on telling myself that, okay, what was the master's gain in this whole thing? Okay, he gave somebody five talent or five gifts or five money, as different scriptures put it. And the person made extra five and he said, keep it. The one that made two, made extra two, he said, keep it. Why is it, okay, so what's the, what's, the, what's the master's gain here? All the master was looking for was obedience and effort to be part of the project. I mean, he could have said, okay, you that made five profit, bring the five. Okay, good job. Thank you for making me some profit. No, when you do good, when you serve the Lord, he enhances your life. You are the real gainer. You are the real winner in your service to God. When people begin to look at your life and begin to wonder, why is everything about her different? Why can't Emmanuel, the man who came from Nigeria, just have so much scholarship and just get that kind of privilege and grace that God gave him? Hello. Not only is he faithful in his service, he's diligent in his work. That combination can never go wrong, my friends. Wake up. I just want us to wake up here. At Ignite, we say we want you to connect, to grow, and be inspired. Oh, Lord, how I wish you can just be inspired to serve the Lord. Tear off your bucket list of excuses. I don't have time. I'm in school. I'm this. I'm happy when um, Emmanuel was ministering last week. He said he used to think he was busy until he had to talk to me. When somebody called me and said, Pastor, you know, this is my exam season. I'm so busy. And and that's why I cannot lead prayer. (laughs) Or that's why I cannot stand for one or 30 minutes and usher people. I, I just marvel in my heart and I say, Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, that I'm not you in handling these people. I want you to echo this back to me. Come on. What you don't use. I didn't hear you. What you don't use, you lose. Remember the one with the one talent because he, he failed to use, he lost it. Some of you are sitting down here, you are probably better at preaching the message than myself, but you refuse to use it. Some of you are at home right there, keeping safe. Why the Lord needs you to put smile on people's face and give them hope that. COVID is not going to stop the church. It didn't stop it in 1918. It won't stop it in 2020. Let's rise on our feet. Father, we love you. You know, God, you know, Christ blesses us for being faithful to advance his kingdom work. He blesses us to serve him faithfully. I'm looking for people that will commit their life like I did over 20 years ago. I told God, and I meant every word, that as long as I have breath, Jesus will never look for a worker. I said to myself, and I committed myself that, Lord, anywhere your project is. He said, the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. No, I'm going to be among the few, you can be sure. 
to have. So when I came into this church over 10 years ago, I didn't look for somebody to hype me, to pump me, to motivate me, to charge me. No. I was resolved in my heart that I will serve the Lord. So it's your heart decision. When I see people that need to be charged, to be motivated, to be... No. It's a hard decision. And a lot of times, we don't serve because we don't know the reason why we should serve. You are saved on purpose. Come on, let me hear you say, I'm saved on purpose. I am saved on purpose. I can't hear you guys. Yes. Like the book of Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. You can look at yourself. Masterpiece. You know what masterpiece means? That Jesus was very detailed in creating me. He made me perfect. He has created us anew. Talking about our recreation in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. How many of you know that you need Jesus to serve Jesus? If you are not born again, I was probably not talking to you. Remember the three servants, they belong to the master. Maybe you are not yet Jesus, so, so it's okay why you are not functioning for him. You are an outsider. But this is an opportunity to heed the call and let the spirit of the Lord come into your heart. If you are that person, I'm going to say the first prayer and just say it with me. Father Lord, I thank you because there are two main reasons why you have come and you have died for me. So connect me to the Father and fix the relationship that I, that I lost even before I was born. And the second reason is for me to be enlisted in your project. Father, Lord, I'm yielding to your leadership and surrendering my heart to you. I want you, Jesus, to come into my heart and take charge. Use me as you deem fit. That the overall and the totality of my life will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And if you are not one of that, if you are not a member of that category, you already love Jesus, but you know that you have not been effective for him. I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer of passion for the Lord. I love the sermon this morning preached by the um, by our mother in Israel. Uh, and, and, and she talked about passion. I want you to just lift up your voice and just ask God, Father, give me the passion to serve you differently. No leader needs to push me around to serve you. I just want to serve you. Let that fire be reborn in my heart. The humility, the, the knowledge, the, 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 the enthusiasm, the, the zeal to be faithful to you, Lord. Release it and drop it in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. How many of you are blessed to be here today? Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's bring out our offering and just worship our God with it. Keep your hands up onto the heavens and just worship him for a few more minutes as we bring the service to a close. Um, bring out your offering and let's just worship the Lord with our offering. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know you are blessed by that work, can you just celebrate Jesus? If you know you are blessed, wherever you are worshiping with us from, whether online or here, just celebrate Jesus if you are blessed. You know, there's something that stood out for me in this uh, message. You know, pastor would have just said the yielding steward, right? But he said the high yielding steward. That means you can yield steward, but you should aim to yield higher. Can I see people that will just want to go out this week and say, God, wherever you see me this week, I want to yield higher. I want God to use me to yield high, high reward for the kingdom. We are about to pray. We are, we are about to close the service. And I want to motivate us. I want to encourage us that this week, just aim something. If you don't have any target this week, just aim that God, any capacity you are going to use me this week, any environment you will see me this week, God, let me just bring high reward unto your glory. Let's, let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you, God, for this service. We thank you, God, for the message. We give you all the praise, oh God, for ministration. We thank you for the servant whom you have used to bless our lives. God, our prayer this day is, God, that anywhere you see us this week, God, any capacity, oh God, that will be operating on this week, God, Lord, help us to yield high reward to your glory. In our workplace, in our, in our studies, in any place, God, Lord, have your way in our life that we will yield high reward unto your own glory. This is our prayer today, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that this week you shall be blessed. In every activity you involve yourself this week, God shall protect you. Anywhere you find yourself this week, God shall lead you. In all capacity, God will be with you. He will cause his light to shine on your path. And he will be gracious unto you and your loved ones. This is our prayer this week to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Go and be blessed.